Hi friends, this is Miss Cat, one of the STEM educators at Boys and Girls Club, and today I want to show y'all how to make your own rubber band guitar and teach y'all about the physics of sound energy. So the materials that you're going to need for this project is a cardboard box. I chose this shoe box, but you could use like a tissue box or even a toilet paper roll. And then you're going to need rubber bands of different sizes and thicknesses and then a pair of scissors. So if you're using a shoe box, you're going to want to cut the lid off of it like I'm about to do. If you have a tissue box, you need to remove one of the sides, preferably the side with the plastic. And then you're going to want to recycle that lid. And then you're going to want to dump all of your rubber bands out. I decided to sort mine. Um, I got kind of bored and lazy halfway through, so I only sorted half of them by size and thickness. And then you're going to go back over to your box and you're going to want to make about one centimeter long slits about one inch apart on two of the sides like I'm doing. Once you have your box ready, you're going to want to just put different sizes and thicknesses of the rubber bands around the box so that they fit into the cuts that you've made. I didn't use any of my really tiny rubber bands because they're not going to fit around the edges of the box. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're getting the rubber bands for this project. This is what my first two sounded like. And depending on the thickness and the length of your rubber bands, it may or may not sound different than mine. So as I'm putting the rest of the different kinds of rubber bands on, why do they make different sounds? Well, to answer that question, it's all in the physics. Sounds are caused by vibrations. So when a rubber band is plucked, it vibrates or moves back and forth very quickly. The vibrating rubber band makes the air around it also vibrate, and this creates a sound wave. The sound wave travels through the air to reach our ears, and that's why we can hear the sound that the rubber band makes. When the box is held against your ear, the sound waves travel more easily through the solid box and straight into your ear, so it seems that the sound is much louder. So with this rubber band guitar, you can also see the differences in the pitch. The pitch is the highness or the lowness of the sounds that have been made. The faster the rubber band vibrates, the shorter sound wave will be, meaning it will have a higher pitch. In comparison, a lower pitch will occur when there are less vibrations happening in the same amount of time. The pitch therefore depends on the length of the strings, what the strings are made of or the material, and then how tightly the strings are stretched or the tension. So that's why with my rubber band guitar, the rubber bands that feel more loose on the box are going to have a lower pitch or sound. So let's see if we can hear the differences in between the rubber bands on my guitar. You can also see on my guitar if we play it in slow-mo. You can see the actual vibrations that are happening from the rubber bands, which is pretty cool. And you can see the differences in between the length of time that it takes for them to reach their original state, and then also the amount of vibrations per second. But you would need a much better camera than I have right now. So this was my demonstration of sound energy and the physics of sound, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about vibrations.